Howdy folks, welcome to Around the World in 80. In this video we're going to be discussing the steps we took to make this big command center with whiteboard and corkboard. Let's get started. And as always, don't forget to wear the proper safety equipment. I started by pulling some old wood out of my stack that I had gathered from an old warehouse. It had some bad hardware in it such as the staples and the braces that you see on the boards. So I used my adjustable pliers, a small piece of wood, hammer, screwdriver, and some gloves to remove the hardware before moving on. I grabbed my gloves specifically for removing the hardware braces because they had a lot of sharp edges and a lot of staples in them that could cause nasty cuts. That was something I really wanted to avoid. Once all the hardware was removed, I had some nice wood to work with and we could move on to the next step. Using some MDF I already had in my shop, I cut out two inch wide strips that would eventually become the frame that would hold the whiteboard and the corkboard. The MDF I used was three quarter inch MDF which left plenty of room for the rabbits I needed to cut later. This strip actually ended up being a little wider than two inches because it needed a rabbit on both sides because it was going to be the brace between the corkboard and the whiteboard. The next step was to plane down the boards that I had already removed all the hardware from. Since the boards weren't very straight, I used my table saw to cut one edge that would be nice and straight, and then I'd flip the board over and cut the other side. This left me with a nice straight board that was about 3 inches wide I could use for my trim pieces. It was really important that these pieces be as straight as possible. If these boards were warped at all, it would cause the command center not to lay flat against the wall. I then took one of the boards and ripped off some 3 quarter inch wide strips. These strips would later become trim for the back of the command center so that it had a little bit more of a finished look when it was hanging on the wall. These strips would not only help with the aesthetics of the piece as it was hanging on the wall, but would also help to serve as a way to secure the MDF frame in the back of the piece. After getting all the pieces cut to width, I put my crosscut sled on the table saw and started cutting them for length. After removing a bad end from the wider MDF piece, I took the rest of my strips and cut them all down to length. Once all the trim and MDF pieces were cut, I moved on to the vertical slats that would become the bottom of the command center. Making the vertical slats is where I got to use up all the warped boards I had pulled out of my stack earlier. Even some of the most warped boards I had really didn't make a difference over the 12 inch length that the boards were cut to. Using a mark I had put on my crosscut sled, I was able to make several repeated cuts of these boards in a fairly quick succession, which is really handy when you have over 20 cuts to make. Now that all my boards were cut to length, it was time to switch out the standard table saw blade for a dado blade and cut a few rabbits on the MDF boards I had cut earlier. Using the chart that came with my dado stack, I set up my blades to make a quarter inch rabbit on the side of my MDF pieces. I also set the cut depth to a quarter of an inch. Using some scrap MDF I had in the shop, I set up a sacrificial fence, put it right up against the data blade, and then ran the MDF pieces through to cut the rabbits. As you can see, it's not the best setup in the world, but it's what I had at the time and I was able to make it work. Each of the thin pieces of MDF got a single rabbit on one side, while the thicker piece that would go between the corkboard and the whiteboard got a rabbit on both sides. Now it was time for the most monotonous part of the entire build, sanding everything. I sanded all the trim pieces first, making sure they're nice and smooth, then moved on to sanding all the vertical slats. I had 23 of these to sand, so it took quite a while. I sanded the tops, the bottoms, and then I would sand the sides as well, just to make sure there was no splinters and that the wood would take a finish really well. 
good pair of headphones with some fun music and a shop fan are definitely your friends for this part of the process. With all the sanding done, it was time to actually start putting things together. I started by constructing the frame that would hold the whiteboard and corkboard. I used glue and brad nails to secure everything together. I did forget to take video of this process, however with the pictures I feel like it's pretty easy to see how everything went together. Feel free to ask questions in the comment section if needed. I then laid out everything as a dry fit, just to make sure it was going to go together the way planned. Since it all looked good, it was time to move on to cutting my pocket holes. The trim pieces were going to be responsible for most of the rigidity and the structural strength of this piece. Since pocket hole joinery tends to be really strong, I decided it would be the best method for joining my trim pieces together. The pocket hole screws would go from the vertical pieces of trim into the horizontal pieces of trim, so I ended up with six total pocket hole joints that I had to cut holes for. Once I had all the holes drilled, it was time to move on to the assembly process. Each joint was assembled using glue and screws. I also used my clamps to make sure the boards were nice and secure and didn't move while I was driving screws into the joint. The next step was to add all the vertical slats onto the bottom of the command center. I ran a bead of glue on the top and bottom trim as well as the side, and then edge glued each board as it went into place. I secured all the boards to the frame using my brad nailer and inch and a quarter long screws. I also had to be really careful not to go too fast and make sure the alignment was good on each board because any mistake made at the beginning would be compounded at the end. With all the vertical slats in place, I went ahead and drilled some pilot holes through the MDF frame. I used my number 8 size countersink bit and countersunk the holes, that way the screws would sit down in the frame instead of on top of it and scratch the wall when the piece was hung. I then drove some screws through the top holes just to hold the frame in place while I worked on the trim. The trim was attached to each side of the back using glue and brad nails. Being careful not to get any glue on the MDF frame itself since that was supposed to be a removable part in the event that we needed to change out the cork board or the white board. The trim was attached fairly close to the MDF frame so as to give it a snug fit but not so snug that I couldn't get the frame out fairly easily. At this point I grabbed another one of the reclaimed wood boards that I would gotten from the warehouse and went ahead and gave it a really good sanding. This would eventually become the French cleat system that I used as a rail on the front of the command center. To make the cleat, I went to my table saw and set the blade to a 45 degree angle. I then set up my table saw fence so that it would give me a rip right down the middle of the board. This gave me two long pieces, each with a 45 degree miter on one side. I then took the piece I was going to be using for my rail, ran a bead of glue down the back side of it, flipped it over, checked the spacing, and tacked it in place using a brad nail on each end and one in the middle. I then flipped the whole command center over so that I had access to the back. From there I marked out the location of the rail on the front, then using my countersink bit, drilled several holes into the back of the rail through the vertical slats. and use number 8 screws countersunk into the wood to secure the rail firmly to the command center. At that point the build was pretty much done and I used my favorite finish which is Watco Danish oil to give the piece a nice shiny natural look. From there I just put the whiteboard and the cork board into the MDF frame, made sure they were set well, flipped the whole frame over, put it into the command center, tapped it into place, and then attach the whole thing using my number 8 screws, countersunk into the frame. 
During the build I had actually made this little shelf to go along with the French cleat system. I went ahead and finished it and just stuck it on here to a little video to show how the French cleat system worked. The final part of the process was to make a way to hang this whole thing up. Using a 1 inch Forstner boat, I drilled about a half inch deep hole at each top corner of the frame. Using the first two holes as reference, I marked out and drilled three similar holes equally spaced across the top of the back of the command center. Next, I took a piece of scrap aluminum stock bar I had and marked off five equally spaced sections. I marked out a hole location about a half inch from the top and used a quarter inch drill bit to drill each hole. I then marked out a second hole location just below the first and used about a 3 8 inch drill bit to drill that hole out. These two holes would later become a keyhole slot that I could use to hang the command center on the wall. I then took my Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and removed the excess metal from the plates. With the keyhole slots cut, I took files and went ahead and filed off all the burrs and rough edges in all the keyhole slots. I then used my orbital sander just to kind of polish off everything. I took the metal over to my miter saw and very, very carefully cut each section off. I used the backer board to reduce tear out. Each keyhole plate was then attached, running a pilot hole through the keyhole plate first and then attaching it later with the screw. I initially decided to just go with two screws on each plate, but after thinking about how thin the trim was and what was going to be holding up, I decided to run a third screw through each plate. Since the spacing on the plates was kind of weird, I ended up trying a new method to hang everything up. I took some jute rope, stretched it across the back of the board, and marked out each location on the rope with a black sharpie. I then marked out the location of my first hole on the wall, drilled the hole, added the anchor, and put the screw in. I then took my jute string that I had marked earlier and made sure that the first mark was exactly in line with the first screw, pulled it taut along the wall, made sure it was level, and then marked out the location of each screw hole that I should be drilling and putting in the wall. I then drilled and added the anchor for the middle and end, checked the level between those two, and then added the last two anchors and screws. Now it was time for the moment of truth, hanging this whole thing up on the wall. As you can see, I kind of struggled to get the first screw in place, but I was finally able to get it to settle into place. To my amazement, my idea actually worked. Yeah, exactly. Everything was hung up well. I put my little shelf on, which I had added some hooks to so I could hang some keys. And there you have it. This was just another attachment I made that fit onto a rail. It's just a little mail catch. It catches all of our magazines, any mail that's important that comes in stuff like that. The total cost of this build was $7. I had most of the stuff at the house already. The only thing I really had to purchase was the whiteboard and the corkboard. So that's it for this build. As you can see there's plenty of room for customization and changing the dimensions to whatever you would need in your own household. If you liked the video we'd appreciate a like or subscribe down below. Stay tuned for more builds as we move through our house doing cheap renovations to each room. Thanks again for watching. See y'all next time.